This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's the Ramble with Alex. That's me, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, coming to us from Massachusetts. That's correct. How far is Wooster from uh, from Boston? About uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. It's Stephen Kravitz, by the way. You can see his name right, right down there. So, right, right there. Yep, there we go. Uh, anyway, um, um, it's how many? How, how far is how far is it to New York? From Boston? Yes. I don't know. I hmm. You know, a nice way to get here though is take the train. Right. The train's really nice. A nice little ride. Um, I What's it like? Four hours? I'm trying to remember. Three and a half, maybe four, if, if memory serves me. Because right. I took it. I took. We took a, a train to Boston, where we then rented a car and then went up. We were going to the uh, the primaries in uh, New Hampshire. In, in New Hampshire, yeah, yeah. So we got in the car and we went. It's not that it wasn't that far from from Boston, and we right. drove, drove a car up there. But it was, uh, it, you know, it was. It, I think it took about four and three and a half, four hours. But you know, it, if you came to see me, it's much more pleasurable than driving. If you right. if you drove here, then you have to find a parking spot, and if you find it on the street, you got to go out and change it every now and then because of the cops coming by giving tickets. If you put it in a garage, they'll charge you something like fifty bucks a day. So you may as well take a train down. You know, the train station is, what is it, uh, about uh, uh, 10 blocks from me? Oh, is that right? Yeah. And you get I off. I wonder if I could take the train straight from Worcester. Who knows? I doubt it. But, you know, you probably have to take Worcester to Boston, Boston to, you know. But you do have trains in Worcester, right? Yeah, but if, if, they, if they're going west, from Boston, they would have to go through Worcester to get to New York, I would imagine. To go south. You're going south. Oh, go south right away? Yeah. Well, so you're going south to New York, yeah. Right. Yeah. But you just come down here and, you know, I, 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 t take a, a cab or whatever uh, or from the train station to my place. Or you could, even, if you didn't have that much to carry, you could walk it. And, right. and, and uh, you know, then you're here, and then when it's time to take the train again, I walk you up to 125th Street, and you get on the train, go straight to Boston. You know? How about that? How about that? Probably this summer. Yeah. No, do it. Do it. You know, we have the guest room, and, you know, right. we, we, I think we have, we're okay with the, with the lease. So, <laughs> right, right. There is that lease struggle. Well, we're still waiting to actually physically see the lease. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, well, you, you've been dealing. We've been dealing that since we've been doing this show. You've been dealing with the lease. Oh yeah, I've been dealing with this lease for almost ten years now. Right. But fi right. finally, we, we did it, but it cost us a lot of money to do it. You know, we had one hundred ten thousand dollars in legal fees. Yeah, I wonder if any of the viewers have a solution to my Facebook problem. Oh, the, the Facebook problem we talked about last week. Okay, right. When you when you were talking about the fact that you you couldn't get onto Facebook. Still and, can't. And then I got a thing from you wanting five hundred dollars. I need five hundred dollars desperately. Right. So I I'm what I needed it so, for. so I'm thinking. Last time I talked to him, he didn't sound like he needed five hundred bucks desperately. I'm sure he would like five hundred dollars, but he doesn't. Sure. You know, doesn't need it well, desperately. Like, so I so I called him up while I'm getting these. These were on Facebook messages, 
And I said, uh, did you send me anything saying you want 500 bucks? And you said, no way, no, not at all. So I wrote this guy back and said, I just talked to you, to uh, Steve Stephen Kravitz, and you're not him. <laughs> and he wrote me back, no, I really need the money. That was his next thing. And I went, right. you're, you're a fraud. And he wrote back, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, the guy didn't just stop. He kept going. Right. I told you they've hacked into my account and they've sent me text messages. They're holding my account ransom for ransom. And I can't get in touch with Facebook because Facebook doesn't have a phone number. Well, that's the see, that's the big problem. So Facebook doesn't have a phone number. It doesn't have a place. Well, they have a phone number, but it just says we don't offer any services. Yeah. You can't get to talk to anybody. It you, just can't, basically you, can't, says, you can't get to talk to anybody for anything anymore. Right. You know, I have uh, the, my shows uh, are are fed through a company, my my website and so on, a company called GoDaddy. And right. while it's not a terrible company, Whenever something goes wrong, which is usually once a month, and I get try to try to get a hold of them, the yesterday they said it, it'll, it'll be a twenty minute wait. I went, I, I'm not going to wait twenty minutes because I know what's going to happen. They're going to say, do this, do that, turn this on, turn that off. Uh, well, we'll report this to our higher ups. Right. All right. And that by the time I do that, they will have fixed the problem. And it wasn't my problem, it was their problem. All right? They, right. Will, they will never, by the way, admit it's their problem. No company will ever admit it's their problem. Well, at this point, Alex, I would be happy to wait for 20 minutes to talk to somebody at Facebook. Yeah, well, yes, but anyway. I would be thrilled to wait 20 minutes. And what I decided happened with you was your account got hacked. Right. Somebody got in there change the password that's the reason you couldn't sign on right right and uh and started probably sending you know stuff to a lot of people on your contact no, list i told you i know of one other that they asked for 500 dollars, except they wanted it in bitcoin oh really i don't think i got as far with this guy as for him to say bitcoin now what i do love is on um youtube okay there's this guy, uh, and he only he does this basically with those you know you get those robocalls, right. you know it's usually about your car, right? Which I get all the time, and I haven't owned a car in fifteen years, right? Uh, your car's uh, warranty is about to expire, and right. you know would you like to talk to somebody? I, I get that with student loans. Oh really? Student loans, and I have no student loans. Right. Well, I get these things, and and uh, finally, I just uh, okay. I'm a, I'm an old person. I have nothing to do all day. I can just sit here, and prank, on these calls. So I say, okay, I I wanted to find out about the insurance. My God, my insurance is going out. And the guy goes, yes. And then, uh, what 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 kind of car do you have? What what's the year and model of your car? And I said, it's a 1957 Chevy. And he hung oh, up. Really? And he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they weren't interested in in fifty seven Chevys or something like that. I would love a fifty seven Chevy. But I mean, uh, this guy goes on, and he knows where these guys are calling from, someplace in India, and right. he he actually has a way of when they you go along with them they say well listen we want to be able to operate your computer or whatever right 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 so here you go to this site and give us this and so on and so forth so he does that but he's a hacker himself so he reverse hacks them so he is now into their system oh wow and he's doing things while they're talking to him like erasing all the information on their computer and you're just sitting there cheering him on because right. you hate these motherfuckers. You know, they, yeah, no shit. you know, and he just, oh man, he just rips them a new butthole. Amazing. Just amazing. But, well, I'd like to have him crusade my Facebook account because I told you they've, they've now, they got my phone number off, off Facebook and they're sending me texts and they want, they want, 
X amount of money to recoup my account. Really? So they're holding me hostage well, now, too. Well, don't do it. You just signed up and got yourself a new one, right? That's what I did do. Yeah. Uh, did, you have a, uh, did you have a weak password? I can't remember it. I mean, your old one. Yeah, the old one, no, it wasn't weak. It wasn't weak? It was moderate. It was moderate. Spelled moderate. You put moderate in there, moderate. Uh, <laughs> no, I spelled password. Yeah. Well, that's the most common password. Is that right? You know, they're, they're always getting a hold of me. Uh, uh, my uh, Google Chrome, it says, you have passwords that may have been, have been uh, compromised. Because somehow somebody hacked into something and then they got a whole bunch of passwords and yours was one of them, right? And I'm going, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know? I right. mean, I used to have a password because it was just something he did. So I was a nothing password. And right. I've been using it, I've been using it literally for 20 years. And what I'm using now is a modified version of that. But it just got me just really pissed. It's not my job to watch out for my password. It's your job to watch out for my password. Right. I'm right. using your system. You know, and I found out that my password was compromised because I went on one day, I wanted to buy a visual, a picture, a photograph. So I went to this place that sold pho photographs. So I bought right. a photograph from them for about 25 bucks or something like that. Somehow their, their account had been compromised and all the people who had an account there had their passwords compromised. And mine oh, really? was one of them, yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, so it's been compromised. Big fucking deal. You know, it's, it's like Larry Bubbles Brown's line, which I rings in my ears constantly. Uh, uh, you know, uh, everybody's worried about... Uh, uh, about people uh, stealing their identity. I said, let them go steal my identity. Then they'll have no life. <laughs> you know, and that's the way I feel about it. Steal my identity. I don't really give a good goddamn. You right. know, I have a very good password protection on my bank accounts, you know, right. and I'm on my Vanguard account, and my Fidelity account, and a couple other accounts like that. I'm, I'm very, very careful with those. But everything else, I don't give a crap if you, you know. But the problem is, is that they do go into your, like your Facebook, and then they change your password. You can't get in anymore. Right. And there should be an easy way for you to be able to complain to Facebook that your account has been hacked, it's being used by somebody, and you want to be able to get back into it. Right. You know, and that you do no, not. I agree. It keeps trying to send me an email to my address, but that's my old email address, and I don't have that account anymore. And blah 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 blah. You know. Right. I'll tell you what. What you should do. I don't know who. Who do you have your email account through? I have Yahoo, and I have Gmail. Oh, you do have Gmail. That that see that's a good one to always put in because you'll always have that Gmail account. Right. You never have to pay for it. You know. And Same whatever. with Yahoo. Same with Yahoo. I mean, like I have a, a gabnet.net address, but that's because I I have my own accounts somewhere and have given myself my company's address. Right. If I ever stop using that, I'm gonna have to write everybody and change my email address. Right. Right. With, right. But with yeah, with uh, Google, basically you've got just one place. I mean, I've never been crazy about you know Gmail, but the advantage is is that you can change that. I find Google. Can I get on? To, can I talk to somebody at Google ever? I don't know. I I have like an account. You know, I have my do my YouTube shows there. And, right. Uh, but I do this. I seem to remember that I couldn't. You know, get a hold of of, of Google. Or when I write them and say I don't like this. I don't like what you're doing with this. Bah, 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 never hear from them. Right. Remember the old days, folks, when you used to hear from these people? When everybody used to be able to talk to them. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk to you anymore. 
Uh, no. You know, no matter where you go, they put you through the hoops to get through to something. What What did I do the other day where I had to? I th I think it was uh, it was was it was it Google or something? No, was it was it I'm trying to think it was GoDaddy or whatever, where I had to constantly say over and over again, "Let me talk to a human being." Right, representative. I don't representative. I, I, I don't even say representative. Uh, I say, let me talk to a human being. And then they ask me another question. I go, let me talk to a human being. After about the fifth time, they turn me over to a human being. Right. You know, that, that should be my first option. You know, want to talk to somebody in technical support? Press one. You want to talk to somebody in billing? Press two. You want just to talk to a human being? Press three. Right, right. You know, and and uh, and, but this is the way of the world now, and and uh, maybe it's uh, you know what it is when you're older. The reason you're more upset by all of this is because you knew a time when it was better, right? When it was easier, when it wasn't as complicated. I mean, I was thinking about my whole life, and I was thinking about growing up in in uh, in California, and just. How simple my life was. I mean, I didn't have a phone, an iPhone. I didn't have a phone I could carry around with me, unless I had a really long wire, you know. <laughs> and, a long extension cord. And I, I wondered, you know, was that life easier, or is was it let it was was it a problem? And I can't think of any real problems I had with that life. You know, if I wanted no. to make a phone call, I found a phone booth somewhere and put in a dime. Right. You know, Are there any phone booths left? No, no, no. Um, but I mean, I, I, it's funny. I just, I'm just not. Um, uh, it, 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 things are too complicated today, and that's not because I'm old. They're just too complicated. They think that we've gotten so good with all this technology. No, if we were good with the technology, we would make things simpler. Right. You know. The technology is here to make things simpler. Right. You know, but you should always have a method of being able to solve a problem by simply saying, I want to talk to a human being. Right. But they right. don't want to have to hire those human beings anymore. You know, at the time in the beginning of, of this technology, you had a thing called tech support. Right, And I mean, right. it, it was really tech support. You called some guy, and he was a goddamn nerd, and the only thing he knew, the only thing he had any kind of a sexual relationship was, with was a, with, a, with a central processing unit. You right. know, I mean, uh, and these guys were really good. They could right. fix your problem for you. They knew, they didn't, have, today, if you do get somebody, they have to look at a book that's a manual and turn to the page that says, you know, floppy disk won't work or whatever and then they will read you floppy disk there's an antiquated term there, there you go through a list you know uh well you know i've gone through a lot of different uh, storage systems in my lifetime you know but right, we, there was floppy disk and there was just a regular disk and then there were hard drives hard drives external hard drives and, and and now you don't have a hard drive anymore you have the cloud right you don't really need a hard drive. They could do everything through the cloud. They could build a whole computer that was simply a cloud computer. But the problem with the cloud is, for instance, I'll give you a good example. Like with my GoDaddy account that I have, which is, right. uh, I hope, hope this isn't boring everybody, but with the GoDaddy account, they were down for the, yesterday. So none of my other stuff worked. Like I have a, uh, I have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, um, what's the company? Um, I have a um, YouTube a, account. A, a Ro Roku. I have two Roku channels for okay. Gab for Gabnet, and I have everything there. I have all the shows and everything. You can click on them. It shows the graphics and everything. And they click on them and it'll play a show and whatever. It's got a lot of things you can look at and see. And this is a plug for that, by the way. If you want to go to my, it's just. Gabnet Live or um, um, what? What's the other one? Uh, oh, the Ga uh, 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 Gabnet TV, I think it is. But anyway, um, but you well, go. That's not a really good plug if you can't remember it, Alex. I think it's Gabnet TV. Yeah, it's Gabnet TV. 
Anyway, you go to Gabnet TV or you go to Gabnet Live. Live has more of the audio stuff. And I have tons of stuff on there, okay? Well, yesterday, all the graphics were blank. You couldn't get any of the audio. And the reason was because GoDaddy was down. They weren't feeding the very material that is feeding those things with material. So 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 it just it just paralyzed everything that I did because one system was down. And and it just should it just shouldn't be, you know. I don't know. I'm, I don't have a solution for it. I, I liked it when I just, you know, I think about, you know, when I was a kid, here's here's the thing about when I was when I was a boy, okay. Okay. I might be coming my becoming my parents. Um, when I was a boy, right, and I wanted to go to the movies. My parents said, "Here's your quarter, go to the movies." And I would walk a mile to the movie theater and go see the movie. And this is when I was right. ten years old. Sure. Right. Or if it was a mid middle of the day, hey mom, I'm going out. I'm seven years old. I want right. to. Go, I want to cl climb the hills in Marin County where I lived. You know, so I'd go, right. go out climbing for. Do parents even let their kids do that anymore? I don't think they can. They they don't let their kids out of their sight. If you want to go to the movie, we'll drive you there. We'll pick. What time's it over? We'll pick you up. Right. You know. Never. I mean, I I had, I had so much freedom as a kid. It was wonderful growing up, and you probably right. said it was probably the same with you. Right, we didn't even lock the door. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think we ever locked the door in our home. Right. And we had a big home, and you know, of course, you had to walk up seventy nine stairs to get to the house. So Is that most right? most robbers gave up at about the fiftieth step, <laughs> you know. But I mean, uh, it's just you know, I just think about the simplicity of life then. Right. And that the complexity of life with computers, I mean, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, I love having my iPhone and being able to take videos with it and do things like that, you know. But nevertheless, it, it gives me more grief. And you, here's your grief with just Facebook. Something right. very simple. And you can't solve the problem because there's nobody there to solve it for you. That's correct. You know, so. So how else is the rest of your life? Uh, what do you do with your average day? Well, I got a gig coming up. Really? Where? At the Veterans of Foreign War Post. And they're paying you for it? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. How'd you get that? Uh, through a friend. Uh-huh. Okay, I was going to say, what foreign war were you in? Right. I think it's, it should be victim to fucking war. Yeah. But anyway, so, you, so you, you, is this the first time you've actually done your act in a long time? Yes, yes. Is that I hope I'm still funny. See, I, I hope I can still drive. you get what I was saying now? Absolutely. You know, it's a matter of you've got to get back in the car and drive it. Right. You know, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I guess I'll go as long as I can remember my material. By the way, Bubbles is always coming up with great lines. He did one the other day in one of the calls that I did with him. <laughs> On his flip phone. And I'm, I'm thinking, this guy still has it. Here, here's, here's the line. He said, I was, we were talking about memory and things like that. And he said, well, I had a senior moment. I said, really? He says, yeah, I dated a cheerleader. I had a senior moment. I dated a cheerleader. Okay. What would cheerleaders be? A senior in high school, okay? Right, right, right. Maybe no, I maybe, maybe I told the joke wrong. I don't know, but I think it was a perfectly constructed joke the way he told it. Well, yeah, it's coming from Bubs. Oh, well, Bubs is, yeah. Bubs is gold. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad to see at least you're going to be doing something. You know, it's right. a start. It's a start. Have you gone to some? Right. Have you talked to some of the comedy clubs locally? Uh, no, you can't get through to them. <laughs> they tell you to get to find them on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I have, I have, I have a couple of them. Uh, 
you know, uh, up on top, I have links. I yeah. have links to a couple of the clubs in town, but there's nobody to talk to. Wow. wow. And the other thing is, I don't have any current tape. You know, they all want tape. Yeah, send send them, send them pictures of you with Clint Eastwood. You yeah, know, I mean, come on, tape. Why do you need tape? You're funny. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, um, hell, when you get to come down here, I'll make a tape of you. Okay. Okay. And we'll we'll get you on tape. Hey, listen. Uh, let me see here. Ooh, yeah, we're running out of time. Really? Let's do this again in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Stephen Kravitz. Goodbye, Stephen. Bye, Alex. Bye, folks. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Let me turn on the lights there. Oops, wait a minute. Go on, lights. There we go. I had to turn on the lights. I forgot to turn on the lights. That's what an idiot I am. It's turning on the lights. Okay. Hey, everybody, how are you? Uh, listen, again, tonight, uh, uh, Jack Bishop won't be doing a show. He's home from the hospital. He's fine, okay? But uh, he just said, I'm a little tired, and, you know, and I know what he's saying because I, you know, you think you go to the hospital, and when you go to the hospital, what happens is you lie there for like three days, and that when you get out of there, you're going to be fully rested because you had all that time in the sack, right? Wrong. Anybody who's ever gotten out of the hospital will tell you they're exhausted, okay? They're exhausted when that happens. So anyway, so we're going to go to the, uh, to the phones. Uh, phones. We're going to go to the Zoom. And if we have enough callers tonight, fine. If we don't, there's no show after me. I could I could stop this right now, and it wouldn't matter, right? Okay. But uh, Jack will be back on Monday, he assures me, uh, unless he has another incident. But he'll tell you all about it and tell you what happened. And, you know, I'll let him explain it uh, because uh, it's uh, he's, he's in um, – his local hospital doesn't sound like it's the greatest idea in the world, okay? But anyway, let me go to some of these people here who are uh, waiting to get on. There are only uh, two of them, uh, but uh, what the hell? They're two really fine human beings. First of all is Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, he's there, and uh, there's Josh... Uh, Wheeler, hello, Josh. How you doing? Happy, uh, happy Friday to you. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Who is this? Day two of nothing happening. What? What is? What? Who is this? I bet this is. Uh, I bet this is Brian. I bet it's Brian. I just get that feeling. Yeah, I'm absolutely right. Mm -hmm. It was Brian. You know what I never noticed, Brian, is you've got. Um, so handsome. Yeah, you're just absolutely attractive no you you have um uh what do you call it uh you have uh tattoos i, I didn't yeah. know that Wait, how long have you had that uh oh i've had it uh maybe 10 10 years i guess oh that long yeah but if i would have had it when I was a kid, when everybody was getting them, I probably would have had Alex Bennett on the side or something with Van Halen. So, I would have had those too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I would want to be a tattoo on somebody's arm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Right. And there's uh, Ray. He's walking. He's taking hey. a walk. Yeah. I have the doggy. Let's see the doggy. Let's see the doggy. Okay. I gotta switch a real here. Oh, he's walking the dog. Yeah, well, I haven't seen him do that in a while. There's the dog. There's the dog. How old What's is the dog? Disney Disney dog? How old is he? Now? How old is he? Now? Fourteen. Fourteen. He's Fourteen. Wow, wow that's yeah. pretty old. He looks yeah. pretty healthy for a fourteen-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, she's is healthy. She's missing an eye. She had to have an eye removed. Oh, oh really? But, and she had to have like four teeth removed a couple of weeks ago. Uh. <laughs> So. God, she's kind of like the rest of us here, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She's about the same age, actually. So, yeah. Yeah. How, and, uh, so, oh, yeah. yeah. 
I, uh, I I listened to Mark Thompson in the morning here, and I wrote him an email saying, uh, hey, when you have lunch with Bobby and Kevin next week, make sure to tell Kevin to give Alex a call. Yeah. He's lonely. <laughs> he thought it was funny. Uh-huh. Okay. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I was listening to I was I heard Bobby say that he was having lunch with them. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. nobody listens to that station anymore. You know that, don't you? I know, but I still do, you, do because do you know, I've been listening you, to it since like 1973. KGO, so. do you know where it is in the market? In in it's listings? bad. It's bad. It's thirtieth. Oh my God! That's, it used to be number one. Yeah, that's in a market with like ten stations. It's thirtieth. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's horrible. They all get paid nothing now. Yeah. <laughs> Practically. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. anyway. Uh, uh, I, I guess it, it, was he amazed that you knew he was having lunch with Slayton? No, it's like it's like why didn't he even like wonder how the hell I knew? But no, he just assumed that you knew somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought it was hilarious. He yeah. just said, "Ah, oh, it's hilarious." Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I, anyway. He just figured I must have heard somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, uh, Kevin Pollock. I, I would I'd actually love to talk to Kevin. Kevin looms large in my history. Uh, in that, he, when I was working at KML in San Francisco, he decided to hold a roast of me uh, at at the okay. uh, uh, at the Waldorf. I think it was. There was a place called the Waldorf at the time, and yeah. uh, Kevin cr- held the the roast for me. He got it together and everything. It was a very nice evening, you know. And you know, uh, he's the greatest thing on Mrs. Maisel, I think. I love. It. I think he's, he's very good. Heavy, he's very good. Yeah, you know, he's very good. Well, that's cool that he did that for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, that was years ago, years and years ago. He seems was... like a great guy. Yeah. He's... I mean, he's he's had a lot of great, you know, good luck. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. What was that show he did with Helen Hunt? Or I got the wrong guy, right? You got the wrong Which guy. guy? <laughs> what no, show? you're thinking of uh, what's his name? He does a really short. good William Shatner, the guy you're talking well, about. Yeah, that's Kevin Pollock. Yeah, <laughs> that's Kevin Pollock. Pollock. He Kevin sounds Pollock. like William right. Shatner when he's just talking like himself. So it's you not know that something? Hard. If I were him, I never be... had a TV show. Never yeah, had a TV I, show. I, I, oh, he said, I think he had some series. I can't remember. But it wasn't yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah. But I like him. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if I were him, I would be sick and tired of people asking me to do William Shatner. <laughs> you know, I mean, come he on. start off his, his comedian career like doing a lot of impressions. Yeah, yeah, but and he got known for doing William Shatner and doing especially doing Peter Fall. Mm. And uh, oh. and but now this is forty years later. <laughs> okay, maybe you'd like to be known for Mrs. Maisel. You'd like to be known for a couple other things. You know. So. Anyway, hello to yeah. uh, hello to Josh. How are you doing this evening, Josh? I'm doing good. How you doing? Yeah, well, I'm doing okay. I've, you know, it's been it's been quite a week here. I don't know if you heard the last two nights, but I heard some. Yeah. What, what a brouhaha! Yeah, I went back and watched that Phil thing, and Phil was too much both nights. Yeah, but you know that's Phil, right? Well, I, you know, I I can't just accept that that's Phil. All right. You know, I, know I mean, I can. I can I, Thanks, I, Alex. There is a there is a situation here. In which you're either on the side of humanity or you're not on the side of humanity, and he clearly isn't on the side of humanity. You know. I know. And, I love Phil, but I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, and and I I don't understand that. You know. I mean. Me either. I hate to put him in the same category with Ted Cruz, but I guess I right. have to. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I was. I listened to the so I, I wasn't on the show last night because you know uh, Warriors were playing so I had to watch that game but but um, I listened to the show when I drove to Lodi this morning and thank God Charlene came on and started talking and changing the subject because if it would have gone a whole hour of the gun talk I would have driven over to to uh, Phil's house and slapped him yeah well because, I, yeah, I, 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 some, I some of the stuff that he says is just. I'm not logical. I mean, when when we talk about, you know, security guys, even if you had these retired, as you said, retired, un, unemployed Iraq veterans and all that stuff, if you even have all those people that they want at each school, still, what are you going to do? Oh, what are you going to oh, yeah. do about I, I, where, where they run every day and they play soccer out in the field every day and the kindergartens, they go on the playground? How do you enforce that stuff? 
Well, I want, I really, what I want at all those schools is like an Afghanistan uh, warrior, uh, you know, who was over in Afghanistan fighting uh, to guard my schools now because there's nothing better than arming a guy with PTSD. You mm -hmm. know? But even if you do that, what's the next step? You have a guy at the guard, you have one entrance in, you have one entrance out. He talked about that Sally, the Sally door or whatever, the Sally port. Yeah, but here's How the do thing. you do 700 kids here's the it, here's within the, five minutes to get them through something like that? Here's the idiocy of that whole, that whole notion is that um, if you only have one door in and one door out, I'd like to see like 20 doors out so that you kids can go running out of any door in the building, you know? <laughs> But the problem with the with the school shooting was that the guy found an unlocked door, right? So you have the crash doors, right? We have crash doors everywhere where you have one way you cannot go in and you have the bar that you push and it automatically goes out, right? It's like emergency exit. So you can have that everywhere. I think it was Jimmy but Kill. Still, I think when you have yeah. those guards at that door where yeah. everybody's going in only one way, Sally Port for 700 kids at one time. How do you ensure when they're out at the field? Like I well, said, you well, the wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, right here, here was something that, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel brought up last night. He said, uh, gee, why don't we just have one interest, uh, entrance in and out of the Senate? Think of how long it would take to get in the Senate and you're stuck behind Ted Cruz. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's, it, these answers are the only answer the only real answer, you know, Marjorie came up with it today again, and I forgot to mention it last night, but it's not a bad idea. You have cars, right? Um, uh, you know, you're a big yeah. car guy. Okay. How many of those cars are insured? All of them. Why? Why? Because liability. <laughs> if an idiot hits me, <laughs> I need to well, get my car back. Well, also, if, they, if somebody hits you and you don't have insurance... Mm -hmm. You lose the license to that car, don't you? Well, yeah, and then if it's bad accident, you know, do you risk your house and then everything else? You well, it, it, why why shouldn't we say, okay, you want guns, you can have your guns, but you got to have insurance. Mm. You got to have insurance, and I don't you think that's a hard. bad idea because a kid like this kid wouldn't even be able to get the money together for the insurance, so he would have to find some other way to use his hostility. So because he Every, could, what? Oh, I was gonna say the, the other thing. I have my notes because I had to come home and listen to this ten-minute segment again. Phil also said, and I'm sorry, Phil, if you want to call in or you can call me later on tonight. So he says, he goes, do you know why millions of people are trying to get into this country any means possible? He said because of the freedoms we have. I have met so many people who have, even Tiffany's parents who have gone through the test. They go and they get their citizenship and they want to vote. They've, I've never heard anybody that I work with or friends of mine or their parents say, I want to come to the U.S. any means possible to get a gun. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. They always want better for their children. They always want these other things, but never ever mm -hmm. heard that they want to come. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, yeah. but the point is that, uh, uh, you know, and, and people aren't, like going crazy to get into this country right now either you know when right. they and by the way you know uh, somebody was saying today on television i mean this was not on a left-wing outlet or whatever it was the, just basically on the news that this is the only uh, this is the only country in the world that has this kind of gun problem the mm -hmm. amount of deaths every year from this kind of gun problem you know I think even in countries like Afghanistan, where there were wars, there were less deaths from guns than there are in this country, you know? So, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a weird thing. What do, what do you think, Josh? You weren't here the last couple of nights, but you've been following the news on this whole thing. What do you think about the idea of forcing people who have guns to have insurance? Well, I don't think that it would be illegal, but... I mean, I don't know. It would just it wouldn't. How much, it wouldn't. It wouldn't you know. deprive them of their rights to have uh, their Second Amendment rights. It would just say, if you're going to exercise your Second Amendment rights, you have to have the insurance to make sure that if anything happens with that gun or whatever, that you're insured. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think you know if 
implemented properly, it would be, you know, illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it's what I would prefer. And if it were, if it were unduly expensive, you know, I, I think that it would be unfair to people who under some, you know, more reasonable set of laws would want to own a weapon for the right purposes and the, and those people were you know law abiding people who just wanted to own some form of defense or something like that and you know I wouldn't want to you know I wouldn't want it to be so unduly that it would sort of price those people out of that ability mm-hmm. um, you know we're obviously not talking about people who want a weapon for you know nefarious purposes um, and things like that so the law on who could own weapons is a separate issue but on the particular issue of insurance i mean i don't know i I don't know that i'm either for or against um i would probably lean toward against but i'm not saying that i would not be open to that It, it, it was just that i'm just saying if you know if it comes to some sort of incredible amount of money or whatever you know then how are people supposed to you know, exercise their right in that case, you know, that are... But no, you're allowed to exercise it, but there is a requirement that you have insurance. I mean, I... You could say the same thing about cars. (laughs) I mean, you could say that having car insurance discriminates against against people who can't afford car insurance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... uh, Would that be the same thing? Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with asking people to ensure that... uh, if there is some misuse of that weapon or whatever that uh, that you're insured if you made this as a requirement even a small requirement not expensive requirement a mm. kid like this one probably wouldn't have been able to lay his hands on a gun because he wouldn't well, have he, had, he had money for a second gun they have money for a second gun and the ammo. Yeah. yeah but but maybe you do something like you do with the kids you know when we add Simon next week, when he passes his driver's test, you know, the insurance is going to be a little bit high because of the risk that they have at that, at that age. Yep, that's right. Yeah, but I remember when I was a kid, I had insurance, and it cost me more at 18 and then immediately dropped precipitously when I hit, I think, 25. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I said, I'm not, you know, standing in the way of that. I, I, would, I, I personally probably would lean toward no. Uh, just because one, I, I don't know that it would go very far toward solving, you know, the issues that we have with mass shootings, for example, and you know, also just don't, I don't, I don't trust insurance companies. I, I think you'd just be handing them a way to fuck people and make more money. <laughs> Personally, I mean, well, I wouldn't yeah, involve but, insurance. But I mean, we're looking. I don't think insurance companies in this country are the solution to any problem that we have. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Phil. Just me. Hey, how you doing? What is what is this drive-by shooting all about? Uh, what, oh, uh, I have insurance. Oh, you, you, <laughs> I, you have insurance. Alex, I'm sorry to interrupt. I got to go, but I might call you back or something, but oh, I got to go. I okay. You... Bye-bye. Sorry. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Charlene. Phil, is that, is that a <laughs> California requirement? No. No. He probably you, you probably have it because you know that something might go wrong, and you just want sure, to insure yourself I'm against in a, it situation not only that you know i go to a range and practice what if what if there's uh, an accident or something happens i'm covered for that i'm also uh covered for legal yeah. things if i do get into uh a shooting and i need to uh make bail and have an attorney and things like that i'm covered for that as well mm-hmm. uh, uh you know but i mean uh, i'm saying that uh but what do you think about the idea that maybe Maybe there should be an insurance requirement for gun owners. Well, I'm, I'm a little um, torn on that. Uh, one is, I agree, I feel I needed insurance and I got it. Uh, there, the issue about the uh, Second Amendment and guns is that it's a right, it's not a privilege. So uh, with driving, that's a privilege. And uh, requiring insurance for driving, I understand. Uh, just like uh, Brian said, Hey, if I get into an accident, uh, I could lose my house. I could be sued. I, I you know, thing, things can can happen. Especially, you know, let's say he had uh, a drink at uh, at one of the events, and you know, and somebody gets killed. Uh, 
there's a lot of liability there. And there's a lot of liability with a gun. So not only do I have USCCA insurance, which mm -hmm. is legal liability for me to, to cover me if I get sued or uh, get, uh, get arrested, uh, which could very well happen if you get in a firefight. Uh, uh, and then uh, I have one that covers me uh, or covers other people uh, if, uh, for liability if I do damage to others. Uh, civil liability. Yeah. And, what uh, if? What Phil, if? Can I, ask, he, can I ask Phil yeah. a question? Yeah, sure. Can I ask Phil? A question? Phil, um, so the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Shouldn't that say the right to own a musket shall not be infringed? Uh, <laughs> kind of, but I mean, it, like, at what point? You, like, where? What? What kind of weapon can you have? Is it okay to have an AR-15, which is basically meant to shoot people? No, I mean you. You could say that when that amendment was when that amendment was created, there was no such thing as an AR-15. Well, can, can I know, I, and, can and I also it that? refers to a militia. And would and would the farmers? And I ask this of Josh because he's very much into the Constitution. Would the framers of the Constitution, uh, Josh, look at what's happening to say today and say that's not what we meant? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they would look at it and say that, you know, the government would be within its rights to make uh, good regulations and uh, laws or restrictions against certain groups or, or, or people mm -hmm. um, based on the needs of the society because they do have the power of regulation over that. I mean, you know, the amendment, just like with any amendment or any freedom that's granted, is, is never unrestricted. Um, you know, we don't have to go into it in detail, but, you know, I mean, speech is not unrestricted and, and other things like that are not unrestricted. The government is allowed to, you know, further the safety of the public and the, and the society at large with, with certain laws. And, and I, I don't think the framers, you know, would have any mm -hmm. issue with that. They themselves in the in the first generation mm -hmm. you know did make laws that kept people on a, on a regular basis as a matter of fact that kept certain groups of people from owning weapons um you know for instance it was illegal for you know blacks even free blacks in most parts of the country post ratification to own weapons okay um, now you could go, go, you could argue and say, well, that was unconstitutional, and I would agree, okay, that it was. Mm -hmm. But that's not my point. My point is that in their way of thinking, in their mindset, they did feel that they had some right, if you will, to legislate certain restrictions. Um, so all out banning, you know, I think, you know, no weapons, anyone, anywhere, anytime. That, for example, would require, in my opinion, an amendment, a, a constitutional amendment. However, saying, listen, as a homeowner, Josh Wheeler is allowed to purchase and own one Glock 17 Generation 3 handgun. He is allowed to keep it in his home. He's allowed to have 50 rounds of ammunition. He is allowed to travel with that weapon based on the laws of his state to a facility to practice using that weapon, et cetera, et cetera. But past that, he must do this, that, or the other if he wants to own two or three. And he is not allowed to own these certain assault weapons that are military grade, et cetera, et cetera. I think that is something that is in within reason, okay? You know, as opposed to saying you can't own anything at all. I well, mean, so I, well, it, it, there correct, are levels it, to it, that. It, I, I don't know, but I seem to vaguely remember that somewhere around the 1930s, the question of of the second amendment came before that supreme court and they dictated that it was a um uh, not an individual right but a group right in other words by specifying a well-ordered militia they were saying mm -hmm. that in groups you could order uh, you could own them uh but that uh, yeah. as an individual uh, that did not necessarily hold true. Now, I seem to remember that there was some kind of decision by the Supreme Court way back when that said, no, it is a group right, not an individual right. Yeah, I'd have to, you know, dig into that specifically because I don't 
you know, I do you seem to recall? Oh, you don't recall that? Okay. No, not you know, not specifically because I mean I don't you know there have been a lot of gun cases that came before the court, um, but I think what really developed you know in the last you know fifty years or whatever is the, that the courts have a wide acceptance of individual. And I'm just giving you the the history. I'm not giving you an opinion. So uh, uh, the right of individuals to own weapons and then okay the government can't take them away in other words and then the government shall have the right to regulate that right of the people and they basically have imposed a a standard that says you know they can impose reasonable Hmm. regulations or laws now i understand you get into some trouble there because what's reasonable correct you know who what, what's reasonable to you might not be reasonable to me but that's sort of what the courts are for that's what the people as the check and balance on the legislatures are for it's very similar to you know the abortion issue and others so you know new york thinks that a lot of things are reasonable and you know other states but let me, let me ask you and the, that's it, where it gets into it, a little bit it, of a yeah, muck but, here but, and there you know the question that i have here is is not the Second Amendment a really badly written amendment in that it, it certainly gets into an area of being vague? Well, it's it's fairly ambiguous in parts, yeah. yes. Yeah. And it's it's not clear. And what we have done in the last, you know, like I said, probably 50 years, but even really longer than that, is we have developed it into what the people now have accepted because – there is a lot of difference of opinion around the original text and you know you're going to get a a a variation in answers if you ask someone who is a textualist or you know someone who is an originalist you know in in legal terms as Mm -hmm. to how they interpret the constitution Mm -hmm. but i think that what we've settled upon you know similar to the abortion issue is we've settled upon a a set of criteria Mm -hmm where people are allowed to own weapons states have a lot of rights over how that is regulated within their own states and they can do almost anything they want as long as it doesn't surpass what they consider reasonable or an undue burden on the citizen and then defining reasonable or undue burden is a little difficult so what you get is you get a a a large number of cases that come to the courts where people say this law that they passed in my state is unreasonable or an undue burden mm-hmm. and then the courts sort of piecemeal hash it out yeah. and you know slowly but surely okay. we've gotten a lot of criteria that says you can do this but you can't do that you know and and yeah. that's what the courts are saying is it's it's okay for new york to regulate weapons but it's not okay for them to regulate it in a way that says well every time you leave your house with a weapon you got to call a guy and get a permit and pay a hundred dollars and and uh, get an armed escort, you know, all that, they would say that would be an undue burden, right? So, I mean, I know that's an exaggeration, but that's an example. Right. Um, Phil Phil had his hand up, and then, uh, well, you Jeff. Know, Ray had asked me a question a little earlier, which was, uh, you know, uh, the, the musket issue when the, when the amendment was first written. And uh, I believe that... Uh, that they wanted the people to have weapons that were equal to police and military. Uh, And what you referred to, Alex, in the 30s, I think was uh, that machine gun act where uh, destructive devices uh, and and other things were regulated and weren't uh, given to individuals without special permission. Mm -hmm. And... uh, so uh, and I don't remember the name of that act, but uh, I you know it was the Tommy gun and things like that uh, that were restricted. And uh, uh, you know, thinking of, uh, about uh, the the Constitution, I wanted to ask Josh, well, what were the what was the final sentence in the Second Amendment? Can you repeat that? The exact wording of the closing and, and sentence. The, yeah, and the rights to. of the people shall. The bear well, arms not, not be, be not infringed. infringed upon, I believe. Probably. Yes. I think that's how it ended. So, I mean, so I it, the exact verb. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, it's a very simple 
amendment, and I don't see how. But no, it's big, not because it has a, because it has a qualifier. That's the big argument that's been going on forever. Mm -hmm. There is a qualifier in there, previous to that last statement, and that is in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, comma, comma. The well, right, the right what, to the what, people. What is, what is the the rights of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. That's right. right. But in order in order to maintain a well ordered militia, so it is specifying yeah. that it is a group right, right and not an individual right. Yes, it's a group right given to all citizens of of our country. No, but it's not. I don't it doesn't think. Say it, all. But you see here, what were you saying, Jeff? It doesn't it's the say right all. Shall not be let, 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 it's a group. Now, is a group Militia. ten people? Or it is 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 a group six? all citizenry of the United States? No, as a group, we're talking about they're part of a militia. Yeah. Well, the, militia the, the people. In I'm order sorry. to maintain okay. a well-ordered militia, in other words, we want to have a militia, although they don't exist except some police departments refer to themselves as militias. Um, but basically, in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, the right will not be infringed. And uh, I, I think that's where the weakness in that whole amendment lies, mm -hmm. is that, that's you, you know, it. I mean, the current Supreme Court could, it could give you a verdict on it one way, and the next Supreme Court could come along and go the other way. So that's this thing true. could get batted back and forth forever. Well, let's solve I, I, it right now. Let's repeal it. Yeah. That's what you'd like to do. And yeah. if it gets repealed, I'll respect that. But, uh, you know, I think that let's take the guns away from all the bad guys i'm very i'm very much for oh, but wait a minute don't they have the have don't guns. they don't they have a right to have the gun no why not because, because usually according felon. to you a, a, any citizen should have the right to bear arms right but, okay well that uh, includes felons, criminals felons and people that you know, but how about that, people how about people who aren't criminals yet but the minute they use that gun to kill somebody become a criminal well, then they shouldn't have a gun. Oh, I see. Okay, so so really, your desire to see first. the American Americans be able to have the right to bear arms is limited. You have a limitation on that. Yeah, uh, felons. No, but they they did they didn't say that in the in the in the Second Amendment when they made it. They didn't well, take I'm, that into I'm, account. I'm happy taking the guns away from all felons. Oh, I and, see. Well, now you now you're changing your tune. No, I'm not changing my. So tone. why don't we just back that up a little bit and let's say let's go into some preventative. Uh, oh, and things. and grandparents. I don't want grandparents to have guns. I uh, I, actually, I don't want anybody to have guns except me. Oh, okay. I believe that I believe that the, the majority of gun deaths in this country are handguns by suicide. That's correct. And and homicide within households of people who have no police record. Yeah. With, with pistols. Domestic dispute is the second. Yeah, I think yeah. that guns should be secured in the home, locked up, and not available. Well, well, wait a minute, that's where they're accessible. But yet the husband in the family who may own the gun and has the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, combination to the safe, uh, suddenly gets mad at his wife. He then goes to the safe, opens it up, gets the gun, and shoots his wife. Well, Okay. You know what do you mean? Hey, okay, she, I mean, if, a moment ago you said you didn't want to see criminals get it, but you have to no, define. I, I didn't want to see you anybody to but me. But wait a minute, if if you believe that this is is this is this an absolute right to own a gun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if it's an absolute right, you can't make exceptions to that. I the I didn't make the exception. No, but you're making the an exceptions exception. were made made by others you're making an exception you, you lose your right to vote if you uh go to prison isn't that true no well you did lose your right to vote if you went to prison no yes no yeah if, i know if people were... have gone to prison who vote now it now. depends on the state now it depends but on the state in the, in the past right. if you went to prison you lost your right to vote no you didn't have to go to prison you could be sentenced to a year and a day and then uh, well, not have to yeah, serve your and, time. and that would be a felony. Mm -hmm. A year and a day is a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, under uh, 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 less than a year is a misdemeanor. You don't lose your right to vote for a misdemeanor, but you lose your right to well, vote. Well, I know people. Who, I know people who have served more than that time. Okay, 
and uh, 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 have re maintained their right to vote. Yeah, well, it was probably Democrats. But uh, the, the thing is— Democrats uh, don't commit crimes. Oh, no, of course not. And, uh, you know, they hug babies. You know, they, no, we they eat them. You know, we eat them. Hmm? We eat them because they're delicious. Yes. <laughs> well, and drink you know, their blood. I, I, I feel that if someone is a, uh, a threat, like someone that commits domestic violence, loses their right to, uh, to own a gun mm -hmm. and to possess a gun. So if, uh, if, if you're uh, arrested or, a, or even if you have a, what do they call it, a restraining order mm -hmm. against you, you can't own a gun. And uh, that's a, is that, isn't that doing a background check? Uh, no, well, Wait, a restraining a, order. That's a background check, right? But, but, if they, you do background no. check on Brian and find out that he had some domestic abuse or something, I wouldn't get a gun, right? Somebody gave me a restraining yeah. order. So that, that's one of the things Beto talked about, right? Remember I told him last uh, night? It's, it's already the law. Ago, the four things that he talked about, right? It's already what, the What's law. interesting, though, Phil, is that you, you know, you I want people why. to have the right to bear arms, and yet now you're making exceptions. Well, you, to be a citizen, no, this country, but rights are you no. have to be uh, you have no. to ups, uh, be no. upstanding and, no. and, and nobody says law. you have to be upstanding. Yeah, it's you know they're not going to allow someone that goes out and knocks over convenience stores to own a gun. And you know if if you know Josh, I saw his name on the bottom of the uh, next to Button Gwinnett. Uh, his okay. His name let's was say on, a guy. Uh, let's say a guy. Yeah. Robs a convenience store. Right. But he gets away with it. No, he doesn't get his. He doesn't get his gun. Guilty. He doesn't get his gun taken away. No, but you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Oh, now, if he's if he's convicted <laughs> of robbing the convenience Phil, store, Phil, you are so inconsistent. You no, are no, but so... think about it. If the guy and, and, is, uh, hold on a second. Is do pe am I wrong, folks? Is he being you can't... inconsistent? Hold on a second. Is he being inconsistent in his thinking? Oh, I think he's always pretty much himself, really. No, no, Phil's himself. I'm not asking that question. Oh, you know yeah. they lock the soap up in CVS now by me? They steal all the things. What? They lock up the expensive soap in CVS now. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Why? Because people are using guns to steal it? No, they just go oh. in and just take the stuff. What does this have to do with what we're discussing? Oh, because Phil said... Well, they, they fashion a gun out of soap. Nice. And and hold up the convenience store. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Look, I mean, you're. you're it's very you're simple. Uh, uh, let, yes. let you you, you lose your rights in this country. You lose your right to vote. You lose your right to possession. You don't of, lose of your right to vote, Phil. I told you that. When you come out, you can vote, right? Or uh, no? Yeah. Uh, yes. Two years ago, if you were a felon, you can't vote. You no, I'm sorry, you can. I know felons. I know people who were felons who vote. Yeah, well, well they, I, I, I mean, and don't give me your Democrat joke, okay? I don't, I don't think anybody's right or wrong there. I, I think it depends on the state. I mean, yeah, you mm -hmm. could know people in New York that can, and but know people in Alabama that can't. I mean, it, right. it, it just. Yeah. And, and as but, a matter of fact, it, it, as a matter of fact, I think here in New York they recently passed a law allowing people who have served their time to get back yes. their right to vote. Right. But uh, also, if they're dead, they, they can vote in, in New York. Uh, stop. I could have voted for my mother. Stop. I mean, look, there, there can be limitations on, you know, I mean, all, you know, any amendment. I mean, you know, for, I mean, for the most part, I mean, there are certain ones that maybe there can't be a limitation to. I mean, some of them are fairly, you know, crystal clear. I mean, the 13th Amendment, is, you know, says you can't own a slave. I mean, that's fairly laid out pretty well but there are freedoms that are granted that can have limitations or or some things can be taken away as part of uh, as part of a punishment for breaking you know the laws of society i mean you know look i mean you you know you i, I can legally own beer and i can drink it too and i haven't committed any crime until i get drunk and then kill someone with my car and then they may say you know you're no longer allowed to use alcohol or own well a but wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute hold on a second you know, isn't, isn't alcohol legal according to the law yes that's what i'm saying i mean I'm, there's I'm an amendment saying, to that you know right but i'm just saying similar to a weapon you yes you can own a weapon 
and you are a law-abiding citizen until you use that weapon to commit a crime mm -hmm. at which point if you're caught they should and will take the weapon as part of your punishment and then afterwards in most states that i'm aware of you are then considered a felon and you cannot legally own a weapon again yeah but how so is that very how similar is that, how to is that? that those, those if, if you if you believe the, in the broad in phil's definition of the second amendment is it right for you to say to somebody you can't own a gun now because you used it in the commission of a crime i mean because we've said you have the right it, it, the right to have that gun shall not be infringed yes phil uh, Phil? I don't know that he's arguing that, really. Uh, I mean, and I don't know really of any court that has yeah. made that their determination. Okay. You know. Phil and then Ray. And Josh, then is, Josh is right. It says, uh, as of August tw uh, 2021, in all but two states and the District of Columbia, voting age citizens convicted of a felony are barred from voting for some period of time. Laws vary in each state. Many states restore voting rights to individuals automatically after they exit jail or prison. Others continue to bar on voting while, a, uh, while on probation or parole. Uh, a few permanently disenfranchised people so, uh, from voting. So uh, Josh, Josh is correct, and I am correct. Uh, there was a time, by the way, it's interesting. Alex, you're wrong. <laughs> no, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Uh, I said that, for instance, here in New York, it's not true. Okay, but what I'm saying is years ago, uh, two people you know lost their right to vote because back in the day, back in the 40s and maybe the 30s, I think it was, uh, you did lose your right to vote, you know, if you, if you committed mm, a felony. It's common. And there were two people who lost their right to vote, Jack Benny and George Burns. What was they, I, I was reading they, they were smugglers. They were smugglers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George Burns uh, said to Benny, he said, we could buy our wives some really nice jewelry, and then I know this guy who has a diplomatic pouch, and he can take it back in his diplomatic pouch. So they bought the jewelry, and then they gave it to him, and then they just went back home, didn't have to pay any money for you know bringing it into the country. They were found to have done that, they were arrested. They were uh, uh, Burns pleaded nola contendere, and they gave him a, a, a year and a day. Okay, what are you doing this for? Yeah, they they cut they cut off his throat. No, you know they, no, they, they gave they him a year and a day, and and Benny was standing by his guns. He wasn't gonna go along with that, and finally he did a nola contendere too, and. Both of them lost their right to vote. No, no low contendere is the same as guilty. No, it's just you don't say the words. Yeah, I just admit that I I did that, but that uh, yeah, I'm 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 not going to fight the case. Is what it basically right. amounts to. Hello to Vernon Nunn. How are you doing, Vernon? Uh, Vernon, wait a minute. Where is he? We'll see him soon, I'm sure. Yeah. Did he there go he away? Yeah. No, there he is. Oh, there he is. Hello, Vernon. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I wanted to join this conversation because <clears throat> Phil is not reading the Second Amendment the way I read the Second Amendment. Of course not. <laughs> the Second Amendment emphasizes two things that have nothing to do with the individual. Yeah. One is a well-regulated militia mm -hmm. necessary for the security of a free state. That's talking about a group, not an individual. Uh, a militia is made up of citizens. It and is made up in of a citizens. tyrannic, well, if, you know, Phil, King George. Phil, that's not what we're arguing, Phil. King, King George. Equal to the state as a whole. Well, you see, they were dealing with King George, and King George was a tyrant that needed to be overthrown because of his tyrannical behavior. So. What ended up happening is the people rose up, they grabbed their pitchforks, they grabbed their muskets, and they fought off uh, King George's army. So uh, it's the same here. I'll, I'll tell you something. You know, we could we could argue lesson, what constitutes. I don't need a history lesson. Obviously, you did. No, no obviously I don't, you do. I'm reading 
word for word. I'm reading the exact wordage of yeah. the Second Amendment, and right. nowhere you, in it does it and, say an individual has the right to own a own a gun. Where, what What's the last sentence, please? To begin with, what it you does can't say. Take it out of context. I'm not so. taking it out of context. I'm yes, just you asking. Are. You're saying what's the last sentence and saying that's the law. Well, you're no, you're trying to you're trying to come that it's all one thing and I'm saying that well, it's individual well, statements well, it, that say that well, those it rights could be no, it could be you're wrong Phil because you're not a lawyer statement with commas well, that's your well, let, let me your let me let, okay hold on that's, that's the literal wording hold on a second hold on a second does it not say bear arms all right yes. what right constitutes an arm there's not even a definition of that Bear arms. I have bear arms tonight. You have bear arms. You have, you have the right to arm bears. Is that bear a white arms. beater? <laughs> no. <laughs> but white it, beater t-shirt. Uh, uh, you know, I yep, mean, when yep, you say bear, bear arms, arms, the definition of arms, I don't see the definition of what an arm is. An arm is a, I mean, a is weapon. It, you mentioned a pitchfork. Is a pitchfork an arm? Could be, but an arm is a weapon. Well, an arm, it's an armament. How, how about a, 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 a sword? Could I have be. one question too. What? I have a question. Yeah. Why do you feel, Phil, that in order to protect someone's property, you have to have lethal force? Um, first of all, I don't believe that you should bear arms to protect property. Uh, it's or, or chattel. That that would get you put into jail. You have to. Uh, you can only use deadly force uh, when you're trying to uh, save the life of yourself or others, uh, and you have to be in imminent danger of bodily harm. So, okay, uh, but even if you're using in a weapon for a bodily harm, Bill, could you not protect yourself with a stun gun or a taser? Possibly. What if the other guy has a a, a different weapon? Okay. So, what if the sky falls tomorrow? That's the same kind of argument. Uh, you're being specious. No, now, he's not. He's, no, no, he's not. No, I'm being, I'm being equivocal with Look, what you're you, doing. You, you want to meet, you want to meet force with the same amount of force. Yes, you don't you're want. Saying under, that okay, let you me ask you this question. Other force is with deadly force. Let me ask. Oh, no, I didn't say hold, it was with deadly second, force. Uh, Phil, hold it a second. I want to say something there, and I want to ask Josh to chime in on this. If you say the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. And I want to own a nuclear device, which is an arm. Would we not agree that mm -hmm. is an arm? Mm -hmm. well, okay. Why can't I own a nuclear device? Because the government allow you to will, will not allow you to have. But, but it's violating the Second Amendment. I should be allowed to bear arms in the form of a nuclear weapon. Does yeah. that make any sense? What I just said, For Josh? Missile. No, because. Wait a minute. They, 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 I didn't ask you, Phil. I asked people Josh. Already agreed. I asked Josh. Ah. Yes, Josh. I think you have to take it in the context at the time that it was written. Mm -hmm. When the authors wrote the amendment, they would have referred to the time that they lived in and what they knew to be true at the time, and they would have referred to as arms. They would have they would have seen that as what people needed to own in order to assemble for their own common defense as they had done before and that would not include you know what i would say you know super weapons so at the time they did not expect men to bring their own cannon for example so how they about expected it? men yeah. to bring a rifle or a musket so you know reasonable individual weapons mm -hmm. and the ammunition that went so, along with okay. it. Not, so how, really how about it? How about an AR-15? Did they were they thinking about an AR-15? Sure. Well, they obviously weren't because they they could not have imagined such a weapon. Um, so I think that that in our modern time would fall into something that you could easily probably look upon as. A little bit unreasonable as an expectation for people to need or be able to own. Do you um, think that an AR-15 is an unreasonable weapon? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes. No, I, I didn't say I thought it was an unreasonable weapon for what it may be needed for, um, for the purposes that it was built for. I, I think it might be a little unreasonable to expect that individuals would have the right to own 
one or especially more than one in mass, you know, and, you know, I, I, I think some fair regulation can go into that. I mean, look, you know, I, I'm certainly going to be on your side more than anybody else in that, again, I do not think that the government, and unless via a constitutional amendment, would have the right to tell me they're going to show up tomorrow and I need to surrender mm -hmm. my Glock 17 and my 50 rounds of ammunition to them. I, I don't think they have that right now. Um, and, and I don't think they should. That is not an amendment that I would be for. And quite frankly, and again, no one here is going to agree with me, except probably Phil, and that's fine. Reasonable people can disagree about this. But if I have to exist in a, in a world where I have to only rely on the police and, you know, they're going to stand outside for an hour and try to fucking decide what to do, I kind of want my own weapon. Now, if yes, you don't, uh, okay. that's fine. Uh, Tony okay. has his hand up. He probably has some, I do. some question he wants to ask. Here's a question for Vern when he was saying, like, the, I don't want to get a context, the only thing you face force against force. Let's say I have a bat in my I have a bat in the house, a couple of bats. I used to play baseball. Say if Vern, somebody came in, I came home from the post office and somebody was in my house, he had a knife. I pulled my bat out. Would you feel bad if I defended myself and I broke it over his head? No. So then really, you have to see Phil's point of view then. No, I don't think if he's Phil's in your point of view, let's say he's Phil's point of view appears to be, Phil's point of view appears to be that, that uh, one of the reasons you, you should be able to own a weapon is to protect yourself in your home. Well, that's, I, I didn't the say Catholic that. Doctrine, and I understand the Catholic doctrine and all that. My point is, is, is uh, it, it's, it's a similar, it's a similar to ham radio. Okay. Let me go into ham radio for just a second. Because one of the things we were taught when we learned ham radio was that you should try to use the lowest amount of power that you need to maintain communication across the universe or across the ether or whatever, okay? You never want to, and, and there are people who disagree with that in ham radio. They want to use 10,000 watts and, and think that's fine, okay? That makes that's, them a powerful radio it. station. You don't need to do that. Yeah. In the court, in the, as far as defending yourself, I can defend myself just as well with a taser, and taser is not lethal. Yeah, it's but I mean, look, kill but that's that's I, I agree with you there. But if Phil has the gun and he's in his house and he feels his life is threatened, you don't have a problem with him taking a pop back. It's, it, yeah, he, I mean, can I say something? Well, yeah, in the situation, in the situation that lot, Vernon is, is talking about, you have to have three. Uh, it's like a three-legged stool. You you need it has to be that the situation is uh, imminent, great danger and bodily harm. That it's in inescapable, and that uh, yeah, imminent danger, bodily harm, and in inescapable. So if you if you can't get out of it, and uh, and you also have to meet the force with the same level of force. If I use a gun on somebody that has got a uh, uh, a, a little stick, uh, that's murder. Uh, well, we're not talking about that stuff. Yeah, but you, you, you so we're Vernon, about, wait a how do we Vernon control the guns? Phil, Phil, shut up a second. We're, we're talking about how talk. do we control the guns? So mental pe I, I got a, I got a peek. Brian, yeah. I'll call you right now, okay? Make sure you hear what I say. <laughs> you know, you know and, and I agree with some of that, but, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, now you got my frame. Uh, well, but, but I go back to my original two points about the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. The Second Amendment is about a regulated militia and a free state, a secure free state. Now, yeah, when you're rebelling against King George, you want to be able to secure that state that you're creating that's independent of the crown of England, okay? So you want to maintain that freedom, mm -hmm. and you maintain that freedom as a group as a whole as a society you don't maintain that freedom as me and screw everybody else right right well you know i mean i think that uh that what we're you know it, it, it i think it's a terribly written uh, uh amendment i think that we should put it in the context of when it was written and the reasons for which it was written 
and I purely understand it at that time. But you know, this thing about defending your house with a gun and whatever, I would think that if I wanted to protect this house, I'd, I'd, be, I'd feel just as confident with a taser, okay? I, I mean, I, I, can, I can appreciate that point of view, and I would say that <clears throat> within the law and, and such, if you or Vernon are comfortable with the taser, go ahead. But it's, I'm okay. saying that. Uh, but I'm saying, and I'm sure Phil will agree with me on this. I'm saying that I'm not. I'm saying that I don't bother anybody. I don't leave the house. Okay. I, I obey the laws, and I wake mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night, and you're in my home, and I come downstairs, and I tell you that I've called the police, and you need to leave, and you tell <clears> me, <throat> "Fuck you, man." I'm here and I'm staying. I'm taking your shit and I'm going to whoop your ass. I'm telling you that no stun gun is going to settle that fucking dispute. Okay? I mean that that's that's me. So do you have a do you own do you have a do you own Please allow me this one. Well, wait a minute. You've been talking constantly, Phil. No, I haven't. You know, let me, in, word, in, let me get a word. Let me get a word in edge Alex, if you were in that room 112 where those 21 kids were? Yeah. And you had a taser and uh the kid ramos came in with a with an ar-15 or a pistol or whatever would you feel comfortable defending yourself with that taser yes in that yes situation? absolutely but we're not but let's go back to why how did this kid get those guns it doesn't Carry matter it. i'm asking yes it does, yes, it does phil. Phil. i'm asking for Wait, it control. Control. Well, that's the matter, phil, phil that's the main well, question we're asking here. for just like beto said if it controls you know, the safe, the safe gun laws to have guns in locked in their safe, to have the, you know, the, these other red flag laws and, and not being able to get automatic, semi-automatic weapons. Those are the things that we're asking and, for. And, You're and, asking for mental health. And this, well, Phil, yeah. How do you know when somebody has a mental health issue that you're going to get them help? Because that's what you keep going back on is mental health, mental health issue. It's a bullshit issue. You cannot walk down the street and say, that's a mental health issue. We need to ha give that person help. How many people are going to say, I am a mental health issue. I, I need help. So you're, you're, you're bullshit okay. about this mental health. And Put secondly, money towards mental health. And, and maybe secondly, so we have these, we have these most, hospitals most of, like we have. Yeah. Agnew have that. That's fine. Put money into mental health. But your mental health solution is bullshit. You know, taking uh, 100 million guns from people that yeah, have Phil, a right to Phil, own Phil, them. Phil, oh, Phil, stop, stop it already. Stop it. Hold, on. Hold on a second. No, no citizen should have a semi-automatic gun, period. Why? The police have them, and, that, and not, the military have them. An 18-year-old kid should not have one. Let's start there. A 10-year-old kid should not have one. Let's start there. Then let's start moving that line to where we, we can all agree. Well, that, that's, what, yeah, that's what... Do you agree a 10-year-old should have it? Do you think Adrian should have a semi-automatic? That's what the. Yeah, Do you, you think Adrian should have a set of automatic gun? Yes or no? Yeah, to protect herself, absolutely. She's going to need it. Now you're crazy. Yeah. Now, now I know you're certified crazy. You need right. the mental health issue. We need to get you help. We Thank ought to you. take away your gun. Yeah, we should yeah. take. We should I take away dating. Phil's guns because he's crazy. Wait, wait yeah. till she starts dating Brian. You'll you'll want to have one. Yes, but I will be responsible. I'm not a mental health issue, and you cannot say mental health is the problem and let's solve okay, it because you, you don't have a you don't have a plan let, for let me, that. Let me, Phil. let me bring up yes, one I last do. thing here. No, you don't. Let me bring up one last What's thing. What's your plan? Because what we're trying to do is take, trying to figure take out. Take away the drugs. Hey, and there's no there's no uh, what you call it, Bishop. Alex wants to say so don't play the music, Brian. Let let Alex run his show for a minute. I you just ran it for me, Phil. Uh, 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 Somebody's got to do it. Uh, <laughs> the the big question here is, uh, you know, it's been said by Ted Cruz. It was said by Glenn. Uh, Cor what's his name? The guy in Texas, the governor. Abbott. Uh, Abbott. Uh, Abbott. Uh, that, uh, you know, we need to strengthen our police departments and get them out there and so on. Do you know <clears> in every one of these cases where the weakest link was in every single case, those police departments, mm. okay? Uh, in, in, in Florida, at that school, Marjorie Stoneman. Uh, I ran for the hills. Well, the guy ran for the hills, but then the cops didn't get there in time either. They were the weak link. That's, Wait a minute, hold on a second. The weak link in this one were the cops again. 
Uh, Thanks for I making don't think, that point. I don't know. I don't think that that's going to solve the problem. I think <laughs> it was going to solve, and I don't think locking the doors and only making one exit available is going to solve the problems either. I'll tell you how you solve the problem. Okay. You make access to these weapons more difficult, okay? It, it, but you can't make it impossible. So well, we're not saying that. Whoa. We're not it's saying that. Difficult. We possible. say more difficult. Impossible. If you just well, made it more difficult, you'd cut down on the It is more nerves. difficult. No, uh, in, not. in many states. Oh. Not when an 18 year old can buy not, a. Maybe not in Texas, a, but in other states. Oh, oh, maybe not in Texas, but everywhere else. In many states. Yeah, uh, yes, it's, it's more difficult. It's difficult in New York, but there's plenty of people on the street with no. guns. Tony. Can I say one thing? Yeah. But let me, if I want to access it, Phil, it's like when you, first of all, if you want to buy a gun, it's like me wanting to drive a car. I got to get a license. I have to practice. You can't be 18, go to the store on Friday, and not have any formal training how to use the gun and just start shooting. He did a pretty he good should. job. Yeah, well, he was able to in Texas because of the you laws. Should, you should buy the gun and say, okay, before you get it, we Do you agree with the law in Texas, Phil? Here's your gun and go out? You should be training. I, I, I don't agree with the law in Texas. Uh, oh, my God. If you're going to learn to drive the a car, The heavens just opened up. up. That, that if you have problems, that you should be vetted before you're allowed to own a gun. And who decides? Uh, well, there are agencies that decide. The Department of Justice, the FBI. I think they should uh, all come to you, Phil, and you decide who can own the weapon. Doesn't that? Let, yeah, let I, me I, let me I, just I, finish here. Let me just finish here with this. Doesn't that go against your theory, Phil? That the reason we have to have guns is in case the government tries to take over. That may be true. Yeah, but and so what I you're doing is government. you're arguing against that. No, I believe in this government. You're making too many. You, you're making it a hard and set rule that you have exceptions to. <laughs> it's very sure, strange. There's exceptions to everything. Very strange. Well, let me. Here, here comes the theme. There's an exception to that too. Well, we can go another hour now. Come on. Yeah, we can go <laughs> another hour, can't we? Yeah, we'll take Jack Bishop's line. The, uh -huh. the, the yeah. quick last thing I'll say is, I sat there and I waited for Adrian today. And I looked at all the parents there, and if I heard gunshots, I would be storming that elementary school. Yeah. With a taser? No. I don't get. I don't care. I would be storming that. I would not sit there for an hour, especially if I was paid to do and it. And would you have? Would you have a gun with you? No. I'll know. grab a stick from the bushes. I don't exactly. care. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, hey, listen. That's it for tonight, and that's it for this week. Thank you very much, Jack, for being here. Thank you, Josh, for uh, your. 100 cents worth your your constitutional advice uh, i want to thank uh, uh uh brian and your daughter who adrian who just stuck her nose in there and uh, uh thank you phil uh and thank you very much uh, uh tony we appreciate it and and how about uh, our good friend uh mr uh, vernon nunn who is uh uh, always a, an added resource on this program. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye too, okay? All right, see you later. That's it for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is not going to be on next because he is, uh, wait a minute, we're frozen here. But anyway, he is unfreeze. There we go. It just unfroze. Okay, there we go. Uh, because he... <laughs> I can't help it when things freeze around here. Anyway, he's, he's taking the night off. He's back home from the hospital. He's okay. He'll be ready to do a show on Monday. But he just wanted to take the night off, and I said fine. Anyway, we'll see you again uh, on Monday at uh, 4 o'clock on Facebook. Uh, and the 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, then a week uh, next uh, Wednesday, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always... If you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye.